What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through today's MLB slate. It's a monster one, so uh, I won't spend too much time. I had a good day yesterday. I finished second in the 250 to start. The no, day. no, no, no. We talk. We listen. Listen. Stop a second. We talked about this before. Okay, with the idea about about celebrating victories and not being Barry Sanders and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't care how big the slate is. What we have to get to. I mean, baseball's so hard, and DFS is so hard. That when you do well, you better spend at least a couple of seconds okay. bragging or something. You know what I mean? So, so just, I'll, I'll step in because I didn't even uh, I didn't even know until this morning. So Bobby got like in the top five in the big tournaments in both slates um, in the afternoon and in the evening. So you want to you want to talk about a little? Yeah, you know, a little yeah, more? no, it was nice. I mean, in my the evening slate, I literally didn't have more than two players from a team uh, on any of my on my three on the three gamer. I just had I had a bunch of. Oh, wow. <laughs> including a pitcher pitchers against hitters and stuff. And it got a little bit crazy with it. Just picked pick my favorite bats out. Um, the, the early slate, what I said, uh, what I said on live was I was going to play please Zach and no one was going to play him. And he was the cheapest pitcher on the slate. And he ended up with, I think the second highest score on the slate with 20 fantasy points. Did he outscore the smelter? I smelter outscored him, but it was, okay. it was okay. he, he was the second one behind smelter, I believe. Um, and it was a, it was just, it just, wor it just worked out perfectly. I had, I had my, my four, my little four, two, one, one stack and it, it worked out and I'm really happy about it. So it was a really good day. A little bit annoyed by the Pittsburgh comeback. Like, oh no, I had a five, I had a five man stack for the Dodgers in that one. Um, but I said, like, if you're going to play the Dodgers, you got to play Justin Turner and Cody Bellinger. And sure enough, they had huge days, but they were both less than 5% owned on a small slate. And all the other Dodgers were over 15%, mostly in the 25% to 30% range. So uh, it worked out well. You could, it's just a, an example of ways you can stack within a popular stack but get a little bit different and playing specifically Muncie. It's you had to, if you played Turner, you had to play and you want to play Muncie, you have to play Muncie at second. So I thought, you know, that Turner's low ownership would stay really low, which it did. And I thought that Gavin uh, Bellinger batting eighth would stay really low. And of course yep. he had a monster game. So it worked out really perfectly. And uh, I wish, I wish Pittsburgh didn't have that little run at the end for the extra 10 K, but still it was a really good day and happy to move on to today. We're looking forward Dude, to the big well, one. On so, so what do we got here? Like right off the bat, we got, we got Verlander Severino, Astros at New York. Let's go. Yeah, this is, it's uh, crazy. I mean, let's let's. I mean, what the hell? This is a. This is, let me let me tell you the, the, how cool this slate is. So I just I, I wanted to just get some projections up there earlier this morning. So I went and I did my process where I put them up there. I just gazed at it in the seconds. Like, okay, this is the top pitcher. This is the second one. Then I went looking. I'm like, oh my god, look at all of these pitchers that I have ranked like tenth or like eighth or ninth. This is just crazy. Yeah. So, so you're going to, and, and what DraftKings did, and there's no way they did it on purpose, but on a slight slate like this, they had like the $5 tournament paying 50 K now. So it's, it's, it's totally, for those of you that have been waiting, I don't know. I don't want to spend anybody's money for them, but if you have that type of bankroll where you don't exactly can afford like one fifty every night with the $15, but you do have sort of that bankroll that if they moved it to $5, you could maybe afford to do it. And you've been wanting to mess around with Saber Sim or just doing like 150 maxing stuff. Tonight is a perfect night to do it because there's a zillion options. Um, and, and you could play 150 for a more reasonable amount of money than normal. And you, you'll, all of your lineups will have like, have like, pictures you will you'd, you'll like it <laughs> yeah and it's in one of those slates where none of the hitting is stands out so much to where it's going to be mega chalk i mean right now i'm looking at saber sim and it's going to change obviously throughout the day but as of right now they don't have any player above 14 percent owned and only two players double digit owned on the entire slate which yeah. i have not seen on a 14 game slate ever before from the hitting perspective so we can really do what we want not worry too much about chalk i think i mean both <laughs> la teams if the dodger game goes i'm assuming will be the most chalky with minnesota being the next that's but the I one thing. I, that's the one thing I haven't looked at yet is the weather. There's just some weather concerns. Yeah, there's a little bit of weather concerns. Uh, the, the pop up showers in Atlanta are always rough. So um, it's kind of a game that we, you know, we'll we'll get into it when we talk about it. But it might be worth staying away a little bit anyway. Um, but yeah, anyway. So the, the Dodger game is really the only major concern, and then there's the Minnesota game with just a very slight concern. But I don't think it's anything to to be too worried about as of this morning. So so pull up your screen. Great. Let's go ahead. Yeah, I, thought, oh, oh, I didn't pull my screen up now. I'm sorry about that. No, no, no worries. Um, so, so where do these guys stand for you today, Verlander and Severino, if at all? I'm playing Verlander. Um, I, I just, I, I'm not going to, I don't understand exactly what the, I know there's a lot of, I think it's narrative driven more than anything, to be honest with you. 
But I think Verlander is a person that people are, for, for whatever reason, do not want to play. And I actually see Severino getting more ownership at the, to begin the day. Now, I understand paying 10 to 10, 6 for a guy with only a 5.5K prop is not something that I'm usually a fan of doing. And there are other pitchers, which we'll get to Nola in a little bit, but um, that, that I like. And, I, and I'm okay with Severino, too. I think that these offenses both get and deserve respect but I think they get a little too much respect. And I think there are strikeouts in that Yankee line. And I think that, that, that five and a half K prop for Verlander is just a little too low struggled his last time out against the, uh, the white Sox. But obviously we know not only does he have a ceiling, he generally has a very large, very high floor, even though he's had a couple of bad outings this year. Uh, he's been getting, he's been putting the ball in play more and that's sort of what's driven some people off of him. But you see a couple starts back, you know, 12 strikeouts against Seattle, um, had that weird game against Miami where he pitched really well, but only gave up, only had five strikeouts in that one. So he hasn't been the same strikeout guy in general, but we still know the upside is there. And the Yankees, I mean, this is a matchup. You, you guys like Verlander. I don't give a whole lot of credit to like, you know, what this means to anyone and all that stuff. Um, anyway, I, I, I really like, uh, I really like Verlander and Severino. I, I'm open to Severino as well, but I, I'm higher on Verlander at the moment than I am Severino. How about you? Yeah, I am higher on Verlander than I am Severino, um, not by too much. And I currently have Verlander, and this is – so I'm, we're just talking, right? So I have Verlander listed, and this is based on value scores and stuff. I have him, like, ninth, which is like how ridiculous the slate is, right? Um, not to say, like, he's not going to score the most, you know, whatever it is, but just based on price and other guys that, they, that, that exist here. Um and I guess that's going to be because, you know, look, you're facing, facing the Yankees, right? The Yankees scored 12 runs a game. Um, but, and we talk about this in other sports, but some guys are just, you know, they're just kind of matchup proof, you know? And, and not only that, but the Yankees can, can, can strike out also, you know? So um, he's going to show up in my builds. I'm probably just to be stubborn, not going to, you know, force him into my big buy-in, but he's certainly – going to show up in a lot of builds because you know, listen not to talk too much about Saberson, but the way Saberson works is they is is they they just kind of pick results to fit into your lineup sort of and Berlander, Berlander just has enough ceiling results in his in his resume that it, he's, they're just going to show up in builds so it's not doesn't matter if they're playing the freaking you know the 29 Yankees you know what I mean like Verlander's going to have like 25 or 30 points for every one every so often in this matchup um, and so often could be enough. Um, 10, six is definitely rough, but as you were saying, I mean, they're like, what, what, what hitting are we really just going to be trampling over each other to, to pay up for today? You know, um, I don't know if there, if there is anybody, so maybe you can get away with just saying, you know, screw the, screw the price, take the picture who you think has the highest ceiling, just, just roll, you know? Um, uh, so that's where I am. I'm currently kind of like, uh, you know, Verlander is going to be okay for me. I'm probably not going to play my big one, but he's certainly fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get to any of the hitting. Yeah. The only thing I would say for the hitting is that if you ended up with like stacking a cheap stack and, and you weren't playing Verlander, I, I do think throwing in like a judge one off, it's the exact kind of hitter that you'd want to take. Cause the, the, the problem with judge and DFS sometimes, and he's such a great, I mean, there's really no problems this season, but he walks and yeah. we, you know, he's not going to walk against Verlander very often. Verlander will challenge him. So I like the idea of Verlander uh, basically attacking that, that spot. Uh, I'm sorry. I like the idea of judge as a potential one-off, but really it seems unnecessary on this slate. I'm just throwing it out there as a, a, a potential home run prop today, I think is a reasonable one. So we can move on to Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay sheets. Why don't you start us off and tell us what to do here? Because uh, I think that we're going to have a ton of interest in Jeffrey Springs. I like this guy, but I feel a little concerned about the idea of mega, mega chalk. And I think he might be the highest owned pitcher on the slate by the time it's all said and done for a young pitcher that ha while he's able to throw a number of pitches, it just feels like a little bit, it's a good matchup against Pittsburgh, obviously. It just feels a little bit like, okay, at 40%, if he really ends up there or somewhere around there, maybe that's a little bit too high of a ownership to try and attack him when we have these really good pitchers at the top. So that's where I'm at. I, I, I don't have a lot of love for the hitting in this game. I don't mind the Tampa Bay stack. But I, I personally am just on – I'm on the – I'll probably be underweight on springs while I'll still probably use them a little. Okay, so I'm really of the belief that on a slate like this where you – I don't know, I'm looking at nine pitchers that I can play, that, that there's really just no reason to play anybody at 30% ownership. Um, that, that, that's, that's my opinion. Um, and 
you know, with that said, I do have currently Jeffrey Springs rated as the top point per dollar type, type value play on the slate, you know, as top pitcher on the slate. And as a result, I currently have him at projecting 31% ownership at this early, early time. Uh, I don't know if he could push 40 just because of the sheer volume of freaking pitchers you can play, you know? Um, so if this holds and listen, I, I was uh, on my way into work and I, I could, I, and I wasn't looking for it. You know, I wasn't looking for content. I wasn't doing whatever, but I, there was something playing in the background. So, and all I hear is Jeffrey Springs. I mean, like, it's like, it, it's, I'm not even like trying to research who Jeffrey Springs is. I just, out of my, every corner of my freaking brain, I'm just getting inputs. Jeffrey Springs, this Jeffrey Springs, Brett, that. So he's going to be old. <laughs> he's, yeah. He just is. Um, so I, I am probably going to get to him in, in, in builds, but if he's really going to be 30% owned on a slate with a zillion pitchers that I can pick, I'm just probably going to end up fading it. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, yeah. I have no interest in Mitch Keller. Uh, and until Tampa gets their lineup kind of, you know, in, in check, I'm probably not going to play Tampa. Makes sense to me. Um, all right. Um, yeah. The only thing is that the Tampa thing I could see an argument for, but that's the only, that's the only hitting thing I'm, I'm have any interest in that game. Um, what are your thoughts with the uh, Boston Cleveland game? I'll let you start it off. Um, Am I getting to any Pavetta? Um, I, I'm not. I just, it's kind of confusing. No, it's not confusing. He's just not making it for me on today's uh, today's board. Um, and I'm certainly not getting to any Quantrill. Why am I not getting to a lot of Boston? I guess that's the question that I have to ask. Um, I have them rated actually pretty poorly today. I don't, I don't know why that is, but. I have them rated maybe like seventh overall as far as just points. And then from a value perspective, even worse. Um, actually, that's not maybe like eighth or ninth. So um, I'm probably going to be staying away from this game. Yeah, um, this doesn't feel like for some reason I'm having trouble getting to this game as well. Uh, I, I, I always give Boston a big downgrade when they're outside of Boston. It's not that I'm terrified about about Quantrill or anything like that. I think that you can get to him. He does give up some home runs. Certainly don't mind some Boston bats, but to be honest with you, I kind of like, you know, making the big slate small and, and not having too much interest in this game. I don't think I'm getting to Pavetta. If, to, I could make an argument here for Cleveland uh, that I think is kind of interesting, but I just think it's probably the wrong slate to do it. I still think Pavetta has the ability to have those four or five walk games and then, you know, ends up missing a couple over the plate and boom, you've nailed them but he's been unbelievably good. I'm all, I'm just not going to play him against an Indian team that doesn't strike out, but I do like this. Uh, I do pretend I, I, I would, I would in other, in other situations, look at, look for, look at Cleveland here. I just think it's too big of a slate for me. What do you think about starting out? So starting off with my, with Atlanta and my Dodgers, because this is one with some weather concerns, but if not, I think that there's going to be some good arguments for the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, I've played Ian Anderson from time to time. So I've, I've been, been watching a little of him and I'm, I don't know what, you know, if he still has a lot of uh, hype or whatever it is. I, I'm just never impressed with him when I'm watching him. Uh, it seems like he struggles to get, to get people out. He, and again, this is just, I, I don't know the numbers behind it, but it just feels as though it's tough for him to get a strike out when I need it. I mean, yeah, he had a really, you know, sick game in Colorado, uh, which is kind of bizarre. But um, I, I think that he could be in a little bit of a, tr a little trouble here um, against the Dodgers. And if you get, you know, if the game goes and the weather's a thousand degrees like it is every day in Atlanta nowadays, um, it, it certainly doesn't help the Ian Anderson cause. So I definitely think the Dodgers are in play. Um, regarding Urias, who I literally can never get right, um, <laughs> I think he's just good enough to keep me off Atlanta and, you know, uh, and Atlanta is good enough to keep me off of, of Arias. So for me, it's probably going to be Dodgers if the game goes um, or nothing. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Freeman revenge. Um, not just the, I know I don't yeah. like revenge for the, for the, for the hitters, but he has made a point of talking about how he's been excited about the series and, and leading into it. He's just absolutely flaming right now. I mean, he is absolutely on fire and uh, I would, I would, I would get to some Dodgers. 
what Ian Anderson has was pretty good against us in the playoffs multiple times uh, over the past couple of seasons. And this is a little bit of a Dodger lineup, a different of a Dodger lineup than he'll have seen then. So I would definitely be open to the Dodgers on a slate where I don't love everybody. But the problem is I'm not going to take weather concerns on a 14 game slate in a spot that I don't think is optimal. Um, it could be uh, you are. The, the thing about the Dodgers is interesting is because of their prices, this, you might get them at like no ownership. So, so I probably would throw them into one of my secondary lineups, but as of right now, um, I would probably need the weather to even out a little bit for me to even do that because I, I, I do feel like it's taking on big risk on a big slate that we don't necessarily need to do. All right. Uh, Sheets, Texas and Washington. Uh, talk about your thoughts here. Yeah. I don't know what this Espino character is going to do. Like he's going to pitch one inning, two innings, five innings, three innings. I don't know what he's doing, but I, I think he's in a little bit of trouble here. Um, I actually like Texas a lot. Um, uh, I don't know what the weather's going to be like there. It's usually pretty hot or whatever. <laughs> but, um, and I like Corey Seager and I like, uh, like Garcia's back. Right. Um, uh, Brad Miller. I like that too. And I'm, I'm kind of into this. Uh, I'm not getting to Dunning uh, and I'm not getting, I don't think I'm getting to Washington. Let me double check. No, I'm not getting to Washington either. So I'll, I'll just start, you know, we want to start throwing teams out there um, that might not be the chalkiest of them all. Uh, I'll, I'll start with Texas. How about that? Yeah, I actually think Texas is going to show up and I, and I think that that's, but I, again, it's not going to, I don't think you're going to see crazy things like Mitch Garver, I think is going to be probably the highest owned catcher on the slate. Corey okay. Seager probably will be end up being one of the most popular shortstops, but even still, you're not worried about it that much. I, I'm going to see if the roof is open in Texas. My guess is it will be closed because 15 out of 30 states in the last week have witnessed the hot, hottest weather they've ever had at this time of year. Isn't that crazy? 15 out of the 30 baseball states. Um, so if 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 uh, I got to get do some more digging on the roof being open, I will be you know hopefully live with us at six. I'm not 100 percent sure that I'll be there, but I think I will be. And I like the idea of, of some Texas as well. And Espino in sort of a bullpen-ish. Now, this is a bullpen I don't mind attacking for one thing, but I do think Espino will come in and, and, and try to pitch five innings. I just don't know how likely that is to actually happen. Um, but I like, this Texas, I like this Texas lineup a little bit today. So they're the first team I'm putting down as a, a general good stack along with the Dodgers if the weather complies. So, so far, that's the only team I've really, really had a, some serious interest in. Yeah, the ne actually, the next one is the next one I'm interested in, actually. Yep. Um, uh, and that would be, well, both sides of it, actually. I, I, I like Kopech um, as, uh, as a pitching option today, and I like the White Sox as a hitting option today. I have the White Sox as a pretty strong alternative here. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the highest rated values for me, and uh, I, I would like to, I mean, it'd be nice if, if, if what's the name Robert was playing or whatever, but who knows, but if you get sheets in at like 2k, yeah. um, that's obviously going to be really good. And, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's where I am. I think Kopech is very, very reasonable of, of a whole bunch of pitchers that I could play. And so white Sox and Kopech for me. Uh, we are on the same page here. I think that Kopech is a tremendous option. I actually think I would play Kopech over Springs, just factoring in the ownership. So I, yeah. <coughs> excuse me. So going through the games we've already had, just talking about the ways that we build, and this is what we want to do. We want to try to explain, you know, different ways you could do things. My initial thought is, okay, well, we haven't gone through the Nola thing, but play a Nola Verlander or a Nola Severino, and then maybe play a Springs Kopech in the same price range. Those seem like very, very good options to me. And I like the White Sox a great bit. They got shut down completely as chalk on the other, on the main slate yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately I, I didn't use them in my, in one of my two builds. Um, I did use them all, all of them in the, in the other build, but uh, I, I'm very into the White Sox. Uh, and I think that, again, I'm not going to worry too much about ownership, but specifically Gavin Sheets and Jake Berger can make things work from a price standpoint. Then you throw in Pollock and all of a sudden, you know, maybe you mix it in and I'm going to want to mix it around because I like, I like it, you know, one through seven pretty much. And then you can always use McGuire as the, the chief catcher. So I do like the White Sox. Uh, as of right now, they are my favorite stack that we've talked about. I'm kind of hoping, um, not hoping, but, but I wouldn't mind the other catcher too, the Savala. Um, I don't know who's going to play, but um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, you use Berger, you can you Anderson. I mean, just again, not to build a whole lineup, but I just, for I just didn't even care about value. I played in Kopech and Verlander 
And I played like five White Sox here, which I mean, with relative ease, you know, um, leaving 4K per player left, you know. So right. um, that's what that's what having Sheets at 2K can do. And Vaughn, 3,900. Abreu is only 4K. Berger, 3,400. And then you can play Tim Anderson with, 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 with kind of impunity if you play those 3K guys. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Um, all right. So now we get to a, to a very interesting one. Oh, man. Um, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not, I can't do it anymore. I'm not playing Marquee. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not saying to play Marquee. I would just say I think he's coming back. Um, okay. He's looked really good his last three outings. Uh, had the, the late uh, San Diego, I believe, uh, put a charge on late against him in the last one right. to sort of blow up a, a decent start. But he it was really good against San Diego the game before. Always tough to pitch back-to-back -back same teams. He was also pitching in Colorado for what it's worth the last game. Yep. His last two road games, 20 and 24 points. He's yep. an interesting way to get way off the board. I like the idea, though, better of Dylan Bundy has a three and a half K prop, which is really yep. good. And that's and that's kind of ridiculous. No? It's really weird. He's coming off a game where he pitched eight innings and struck out seven. I know his strikeouts have been down a little bit this year, but they certainly shouldn't be three and a half. So Bundy as an over, I'll give you guys a little bit of what I'm doing away. I think Bundy as an over is a tremendous play, um, a tremendous bet on its own. However, I also think there are, there are bats on both sides of this game that I have interest in. And, and the Mar Marquis, as much as he's, you know, like I don't like stacking against him. I, I barely do it against in Coors. Why am I going to do it with one of the chalkier teams away from Coors? It is good hitting weather again in Minnesota. Let me just double check exactly what I've got for weather. 90 degrees in Minnesota. So maybe it's not a Coors game, but it's certainly a great hitting game for Minnesota. And I think that you could, you know, Kepler, Buxton, uh, they're really expensive. So I don't know how they can be as popular as are projected, except for the Kirilov Larnick thing is makes a stack work. I don't mind it. Um, and I also don't mind Bundy. So, so, so Bundy, Bundy I have on my list as definitely a guy who I'm going to consider using and I'm absolutely going to uh, to use some of these twins, but probably more of a secondary stack for me, just because, like I said, I, I can't, I do think Marquette Marquis is starting to come back a little bit. He's always going to give up some long balls, but uh, I don't know if I want to make a full stack here. Uh, that's just where I'm at as of this moment. However, it is really easy. It, you know, they're so expensive at the top, but if you wanted to play like Kirilov, uh, if you play, like I said, if you play Kirilov Larnick, it does open up everything else. And uh, those bats certainly can have enough upside on their own. So you could even play Jeffers as the catcher and then play two of Buxton, Correa, Arias, and Sanchez to make, to round out a so, stack. So, or, 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 or Kepler. So I, I, I like Minnesota. So in fairness, I'm looking at the, uh, the actual uh, props here and uh, what well, you can actually bet on DraftKings. And yeah, I mean, your Bundy, it's, it's over 3.5. I mean, it's juicy to over, you know, it's, it's minus 150, but still, it is kind of kind of curious, you know. You have, in the same game, Marquis is a is a four and a half, and Bundy's a three and a half. Um, maybe I just maybe I just missed the missed the boat where Bundy just stopped striking people out. I mean, because I I have this feeling in my head that he still strikes people out. You know, um, I don't I mean, know. He, he's, he's, he's been lower this year, but at the same, in all fairness, like he's against Colorado. I'm the, exactly, it's uh, against Colorado, and he just pitched against Arizona and and another NL West team, and he struck out seven and in eight innings. He pitched a beauty. Um, uh, he put up thirty one fantasy points. I mean, seventy seven hundred. That certainly seems reasonable for me, especially when we're comparing him to a guy like Springs, who's going to be forty percent owned versus four percent owned Bundy, ten times the ownership, eight hundred dollars more, and hasn't had thirty fantasy points in a game this season. I know the matchups are a little different, but and it's yeah. hot weather, but the hot weather doesn't mean you can't strike anybody out. Um, doesn't matter if you don't hit the yeah, ball. Exactly, the exactly. So I like that. I like that. I, I do like the Bundy as a little bit of a get weird pitcher. All right, Sheets, uh, go, go, you start with this one because I might have some weird takes in this game. Oh yeah. I don't know if I'm really, I, I don't think I have the balls to do it and there's no real reason to do it, but. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to consider this game a cross off so unfortunately i might give you a chance to put put a bad take out there but let me just see i i you know i i, that's not, I actually do have um both of these teams casey and oakland from the hitting side as actually being playable um is, is this the day you're going to make me play Zach Ranky? Is that, is that, is that the story or no? No, I actually was thinking the other, the other route a little bit. Um, okay. I don't think I'm going to play Cole Irvin. I just think that he belongs in a, 
if you're playing 150, keep him on your list. Um, if you're he's playing, got the same. He's got this. He's got the same K prop, I think, as the guys we were just discussing. Um, yeah, he's also three and a half. Bundy, uh, Granky at two and a half, which I, you almost never see for a starter, even like a, a short starter. <laughs> I've never seen anything that yeah. well. And I, I do think that, 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 like what you said, that the value side of the of the Oakland, like Jonah Bride, should bat near the top of the yes. order at two K. Yes. Um, he's going to be yeah. Uh, Seth Brown at 3.6. Um, you can mix in a Loriano for a mini stack or a Murphy or something like that. Maybe even vote. It's just, there's, there's, there's some cheap bats here that have my interest. So I do think an Oakland, uh, Oakland, like there's a value mini stack sure. is the way I would put it. Um, and I think that you could make a little bit of an argument for some of the individual KC bats. The problem is Irvin, a lefty, obviously doesn't give as many steals, which is what we love to play for KC, but Hunter Dozier is really cheap. Uh, ben Intendi, even in the lefty lefty, really cheap. Santana finally got hot and had some big hits the other night. He did. He did. And you have the two best, uh, the, my, my, my two, my, my favorite uh, two catchers. You only get one of them today. It's a lefty lefty for Melendez, but I, I just think, and then, and of course you got Bobby Witt. So I, I think that you could make an argument for, for Oakland, for Oakland as a value stack and for KC. Uh, I certainly could see a full stack getting there uh, for KC, especially because once you get past Irvin that you just have a garbage bullpen behind you. All right. Toronto and Milwaukee sheets. What are your thoughts on this one? I think Toronto could, could just destroy this slate. Um, it's, I, like I, 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 I like, I like Toronto. Um, just kind of hope that people don't play them because it's right. It's the righty, I guess. Um, uh, but again, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still juiced from, from taking down the slate against Hauser with the Reds who are 0 and 20 at the time. Um, right, right. So I know that I, can, I know that I know the people that if the Reds can get to him, like Toronto can get to him. And that's you know that's hashtag analysis, but um, you know he gives up uh, you know he gives up some stuff. You know he doesn't give up home runs all the time, but you know against Toronto, you know uh, uh, I think they're fully fully live. And for that matter, let's just add another just freaking strikeout monster to the list. Now it'd be Alec Manoa from from Toronto. Yeah. Um, he's ninety five hundred. I I can't I can't. Um, honestly say that Noel is that much of a better play than I totally, totally agree, you know, and, and, and he's going to be much higher owned. Um, and he's going to, he's, he's much higher projected, but I just don't, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I just, I, I just know that I know, I know Manolo could put up 30, you know what I mean? I could yeah. do it and he could do it in the spot. And, uh, and, and uh, I, I think that if this ownership is even remotely real at under 10%, I'm, I'm going to be, I'll be significantly above the 10%. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I mean, the thing about Manoa that's great is doesn't walk all that many guys. He's getting, he's getting a little bit more this year. He has struck out less guys this year. Cause he's been a little bit more pitching to, to real, like a real life pitcher, like trying to, you know, work his way through innings, which he's done a really good job of. I mean, and you have a Milwaukee team that with their power and in a, in a solid lineup, they also strike out quite a bit. So I'm into the idea of the Manoa at low ownership too. And, and not that we need the low ownership, but look, I mean, if Manoa ends up, this is the kind of, you know, maybe it's not quite Dylan sees because he doesn't quite have that same strikeout side, but he's a better, I think he's actually a better pitcher to be honest with you, but he, he does have enough upside to potentially be the highest scoring player on the slate. And if you can get him at like five to 10%, Oh boy. I mean, I'm going to have to take a chance on that against a team who's never faced him before just feels like a great spot to try and attack here. So I'm totally with you. I always hesitate on big slates, especially to try and stack Toronto because I'm sorry to try and stack against, against Milwaukee because of the respect I have for their yes. bullpen. Right. But if it's seven to nothing off of Towser, that's not going to matter. You know what I mean? If mm -hmm. it's seven to four, it will matter, but you're not going to see, right. you know, all these guys. And then by the way, even if you do, and you want to bring in Josh Hader, you have the perfect team to hit guys like Josh Hader. You're going to, I mean, Josh Hader is amazing. But if you want to, you know, somebody can yeah. connect off of him. These guys yeah. are all, you know, power righties. Uh, if he has to face every, I mean, going through Chapman, Guerrero, Teoscar, Kirk, oh. Bichette, Guriel, all of these guys can hit home runs even off of some of those good lefties they have in the pen. So I like the idea of playing some Toronto, but I don't feel as in love with it as I would if it was Hauser and basically any other bullpen behind him. Well, I mean, the other thing you can do is make sure you play Manoa with Toronto bats because this way you're not worried about the seven four variation. I like because that. But seven four, you're losing anyway. I, I think it's a really good call. Really, really good to play pitchers with your hitters if you can on these, especially in this kind of a situation. So I totally agree with that. Um, 
All right, let's talk about Chicago St. Louis, another place that might get a little bit of ownership. And I'm just going to say right now, like, I don't think I, I, Kyle Hendricks has certainly regressed this year. I still don't know if he's quite as bad to make him the guy we pick on on a big slate. Don't forget, he's had to pitch in like three or four major win games in Chicago so far already. And has also put up some absolutely monstrous performances. He had like a 35 point out. He almost had the complete game. I think he almost had not the no hitter. He, he almost had the shutout. He was eight and two thirds. So he just missed the shutout in that one. Um, the one I'm sort of deciding with is what do we do about if we want to spend down? I do think Pal Palente is, is viable here. It's the Cubs. You have a low run total. You've got another guy with a three and a half K prop, but he's, he's 5,500. So I I'm having Palente on my list as a potential. And then I am open to mini stacking the Cardinals, but I don't know. The problem is once you get past Hendricks, again, terrible bullpen behind you. I just don't know how, I don't think Hendricks is so, so bad. So I'm sort of struggling a little bit with this one. How about you? Yeah, I agree with you on Palante uh, with, with this, um, with this disclaimer uh, that I'm not sure you're going to need to spend all the way down there, mm -hmm. but, but um, I, I have him as totally reasonable plan. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, if you want to end up playing Verlander or somebody like that or, or Nola, and you need to pay down to, to get to say, I don't even know what bats I'm even thinking about, but, but let's say you wanted to play Toronto and play, pay up for all those guys. The Dodgers, um, maybe the Dodgers. Dodge, right, right, Dodgers. Then uh, I, I, I still don't think you need, you need to play him, but I'm trying to think of what, uh, you, but you know what people are going to do? They're going to do the Nova Springs in like variations like that or, or something, whatever. And then this 80, is 8,500 savings is going to be enough to get the Dodgers? Probably not. So maybe... Yeah, I'm. Yeah, uh, listen. If I get to him in my builds, I'll get to him. I mean, he's certainly not going to be like forced into a main, you know, into a big buy-in by me. But I, I certainly would. We're not going to x him out or anything like that. Yeah, and again, in the 150 thing, I would spread out a little bit pitching, and I would throw Kyle Hendricks into a lineup or two. I know it sounds mm -hmm. weird. Um, it's not going to be on my list because I'm not going to be one. Well, maybe I will 150. Who knows? You know what? Why not? Maybe I will 150 and I'll throw yeah. a, a little Hendricks in there and you try my saber sim luck out on on yeah. the uh, on the uh, spit, wheel spin or whatever with with my yeah. ten over exactly. things. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about the Angels and Seattle because this is interesting to me. I mean, this is we we talk about this. I feel like every time he pitches, and Flexen has given up more power this season. Hasn't had that kind of blow up -y game where you're going to win this, a 14 game slate off of them. And I do think the angels are going to be the most popular team. Potentially. I'm just going to double check the weather. I know it's really warm down here, but again, down in Anaheim, some it's a little different 79, pretty good winds blowing out to right center. Um, I certainly can get behind the angel stack. I actually think they make a lot of sense and I'm not as worried about ownership as usual because of the size of the slate. Uh, at the same time, on you know Michael Lorenzen, I think that you could make an argument at 7,200 for him. I don't know that I'm going to end up using him at all today, but I, I don't think it would be a terrible play. And again, he's a 150 guy for me that, again, four and a half K prop only. Seattle, we just saw get shut down. Maybe they bounce back big. Um, almost got no hit yesterday. I don't even know what ended up happening with that Montas game. Which game? Uh, oh, he didn't quite get it. But yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So... I could see Lorenzen having a decent outing here. Um, and by the way, the, if you want to go super, like it, maybe not the right slate for it, but I mean, if you're, if, if we did need a dumpster dive, we had a Colorado game or we had the Dodgers in some, you know, 11 total or something like that. You could make an argument for flex. And I don't think I'm going to make that argument on this size of the slate, but he's also got a four and a half K prop. He's 6,200. He's a real life pitcher with an actual leash. Anytime that happens, it's sort of like my police act play from yesterday, which was a smaller slate. But if a guy has a leash and the Babip's on his side and you're facing an Angels team that is hit or miss would be a, an understatement. They've got, you know, four to five tough bats and then like just some of the worst bats in baseball after that. Um, so I, I could see an argument for Flexen, but it would have to be a 150 type of thing, which shouldn't be like a, a, a priority. Uh, but I, I'm into the Angels. Yeah, so I have the Angels rated as, as you know, the top stack or whatever that's worth um just on raw whatever and their value is just is, is kind of okay but like i said any any 
type of ownership that's that's you know on a slate like this is rough and 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 flexing i mean look the other runs he gives up two 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 three one i mean he had a couple of games where he got got uh taken out a little bit but um uh look am i gonna i still don't think i'm gonna i'm gonna play the angels in in the big one i don't i, I think i'm gonna go with one of those other teams that we talked about before um uh i think it's important to get a couple of those 9k guys those pitchers you know the, there's a lot of opportunities to, to to put up good scores there and i'd rather save the money than 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 play play trout no tommy who i've who I would like to play, you know what I mean? If I'm playing the Angels, and I kind of do want to play those guys, uh, so I, I always find myself not really getting the Angels, but I can't when 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 there's when they're good pitchers on the slate. Yeah, I hear you. She said, just look back at it, and I'm thinking we should be looking at Seattle as a potential, at least a mini stack. I mean, you've got you've got Trammell who's probably going to bat around fifth, and he's 2,500. You've got Winker uh, batting third, probably at, at 3,300. Uh, there's just a, there's some, there's some cheap bats here. You can get a nice little, and then you mix it in with maybe a JP Crawford. You know, you know, he's back. Your, your man is back by the way. I don't think Upton. Yeah. Yeah. 23. So, so you got, you've got some options here now to use my whole outfield on Seattle in a spot that I don't necessarily think is amazing. I, it's, it's a little hard for me to stomach on a big slate, but I, I can definitely get behind the Seattle side of this game too. And I, you know, again, good hitting weather in LA that the stadium plays very different when it's above, you know, 75 degrees and you've got the wind blowing out on top of it. So I, I can get behind this game a little bit, both sides of it. And, uh, you know, it's going to it's going to come down to certain things. And if we get like an extreme hitters umpire or something like that, I'll probably be even higher on these guys. So I like both sides of this game. All right. So Detroit, Arizona. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I think Merrill Kelly is in play here. Um, uh, the other thing that is obviously the case is that Detroit's in play <laughs> as, as, as hitting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also, I also think that Arizona is in play as well. Um, I don't think I have to st trample over people to play either of these teams, but uh, they are rated uh, as, as really strong values because of their prices. And who did I have luck with the other day? Some guy from Arizona, it's Alec Thomas. I think he hit a home run the other day. Mm -hmm. um, he's 2,900. Um, so I don't know. I don't know about the Roni Garcia. I'm not getting to that, but I think that um, uh, Merrill Kelly at under 8K at home against Detroit uh, is is is. I know we don't you know like playing him, but I think he's he is in play. Uh, so for me, Arizona fine, Detroit fine, and and Merrill Kelly. Well, he certainly won't want to end up in one of my seven seven sevens or something. But I definitely agree that Merrill Kelly's in play. You have a guy who has a walk problem against a team that doesn't like to walk very much. Um, right. I also think that again, I, we, we don't have roof information yet. They, for some reason, Arizona who usually discloses it weeks in advance. We haven't seen it. I'm going to guess that means it's closed. I double checked okay. it before the show today because I was in, you know, I always see Merrill Kelly and go, Oh, I hope the roof's open <laughs> mm -hmm. because if you wanted to stack up Detroit, you could do so. You could do it like a four, four with an, any top stack you want. Cause I mean, you've got just two guys in the two K's everywhere. Riley green, probably batting. And Baez has been hitting it. Baez is finally heating up. Yep. Um, Victor Reyes leading off at 2,800. Riley Green, 2,200. Uh, Torxon flat minimum on, at first base. Robbie Grossman at 2.4. So you've got a lot of cheap options. And then you've got Tucker Barnhart even. You could fill out a stack at the minimum. So I, I don't mind the idea of, of playing Detroit here. And I'm definitely going to do it in some of my lineups. Probably won't be a priority, but they're certainly on my list. And and I and I kind of like Garcia for what it's worth. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not getting to the Arizonas, but I if the roof is open, I will play both sides of this game. And I agree with you about the Alec Thomas part of it, though. I do like him as a as a one off. There's a lot of good cheap guys out there, which just again is going to lead us to to paying up for pitching. I think. All right, Philadelphia, San Diego. Here's the chalk. Is Nola now? Is should he be as high of chalk as he is? He has the highest K prop on the slate. He's very good. He's facing a very good pitcher as well, a very talented pitcher as well in Mackenzie Gore. And again, I don't believe, oh, they have seen him once. Um, I don't think I can get to Mackenzie Gore at 9,100, even though I think some people are going to. I am probably going to stick on the NOLA side, but even as much as I like NOLA, I probably will be underweight just because there's other good pitchers that I could see having a similar result. You do have a weekend San Diego lineup with no, uh, no Machado. 
And I think that that's, you know, something obviously to keep an eye on uh, whether or not he does play. But I, as of right now, Nola is my number one. But at the same time, I don't think that he's so much better than everybody else that we have to play him at major chalk when you can get a little different with some other spots. Yeah, I, I, you took the words right out of my mouth, Matt. Nola is the top spend up of them all. Um, and he's going to be owned accordingly. Uh, he's, I have him right now at 33% ownership. Uh, which could certainly end up that way. Um, and I agree with it what you said. It could end up about- higher, just, so you, just to, to be honest. I think it actually does end up higher. You think so? Just because uh, they, I, don't, I think people are going to see the Severino and, 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 and Verlander and just go, got about 14 games late. Why do I need to pick on two of the better offenses in baseball? Right. You know, anyway. They'll, they'll, they'll just go Springs, Nola, and just and then just. Then just Something like that is what, I, is what I would imagine, yeah. Um, I, I, would, I, would, uh, I would play Gore. Um, I, I don't really have a problem doing that. I don't, but right now I, I, I agree with you. I think he might get owned a little bit as well. I have him over 10%, which on a slate like this is, is, is being owned. You know what I mean? Um, but if, uh, for whatever reason, like you said, we start seeing Nola just pushing 40% and Springs and it, it, it just becomes a fait accompli that that's what you want to do. Um, I wouldn't mind Gore as a pivot. Um, uh, Philly's obviously been, you know, doing, <laughs> they, they lost a game since, since Girardi left. I don't know. It's, it's pretty uh, wild how that happens, isn't it? It's just ridiculous, honestly. It, but It actually uh, doesn't make any sense. And then none. like makes sense Zero. in basketball more, but like yeah. in baseball, it makes no sense. None. <laughs> like, and um, and so, so I, I would actually consider playing him. And I, I think kind of, um, kind of a cool way to play is to play like some combination of Kopech, Gore and, um, and Manoa, right? Like those three, those are the three, you know, upside pivots off of Nola, yeah. and, uh, and and scramble those in some way. But the thing off is, off of is Manoa that, and off of, off, of, off of Nola and Springs, by the way. Right. Yeah. Well, I just meant even the, the you know the higher price, yeah. you know. Um. So, the thing is that if you play Nola, Nola, the thing is there's not a lot of heavy, really heavy chalk underneath, you know. So, um, right. He does look. Let's call it what it is. He does rate to be the best play. And uh, I think it's important to, to let everybody know that. And I do think that Springs is also the best. I, I, I do. I, I do like Springs and Nola the best right now. Um, but in GPPs, that's just not the, unfortunately, not the end of the story. You know, so we right. have to see lineups. We have to see who gets on. We have to follow yeah. all this and see how the lineups kind of shake. But, um, yeah. If, if, I was, if, I, if I was doing a cash game build, I don't see how Nola would be out of that. I mean, he would have to be in it. But it, yeah. you're not playing cash games here. So, yeah. All right, Cincinnati, San Francisco. Uh, Sheets, what do you think about this game? Because I have a really- Can we just pass this? Do I have to play Alex Cobb? I'm open to it though, because uh, you have Cincinnati, who's just dreadful. You have Alex Cobb pitching at home in San Fran against a team that can't score at home usually. Um, And they have the best hitters park around basically. And you you take away the big weakness of, of Cobb can be his home runs allowed and his walks and this team- uh, it's going to be hard to hit home runs in San Francisco, and it's going to be hard to walk a lot when you don't walk a lot. So um, based on that, I just think as a guy now, I wish he was 6,300, like not 8,300, but I think he's in play. And I also think that the Giants uh, stack is certainly in play. And, you know, I, I just think that I, I don't I don't like stacking games in San Francisco on big slates. It's the only reason I don't have them even higher. It's only 58 degrees there. <laughs> as usual 95 everywhere else and then it's 50 degrees and of course san francisco god i can't believe it. it's a great city yeah. that if it was ever actually stayed warm like would be unbelievable but ugh. uh so so i have i have a little bit of interest in the uh in the giants uh because that reds bullpen is taxed they're exhausted and they're making the trip out out west uh ashcroft certainly has some future potential but i think this 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 is a really good disciplined giants lineup and I think that there's a chance the Giants could be that sneaky late game hammer that, that gets you there. So they are on my list. They are not my priority, but they're on my list. I would I would add up uh, something with FanDuel, by the way. I just always wanted to just check on FanDuel for a second, see if any, anything that's different. And the one thing that I noticed different um, in the pitching is that Mackenzie Gore is, is much cheaper over there. I mean, he's 8K on FanDuel um, compared to Nola, who's the same 10-3, compared to even – Springs is even 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 uh, eighty three hundred over there. Um, Cobb is a little cheaper. He's at seventy six hundred. 
uh, Kopech is about the same. So everybody's kind of the same with the exception of, of, of Gore, who's a full 1100 cheaper over there. So, um, and I don't think he's going to be any lower owned or uh, any, any, any differently owned. You know right. what I mean? Um, so I, I would, if you're going to, if you think Gore can have a good game, I'd probably play him on FanDuel. I like that call, but I also want to point out that just on FanDuel, I, I, I generally just spend that. But if I did it, if I pivoted, it would be to a guy like Gore with the upside to win a right. slate potentially. Yeah. But I need to, I really want to try and get, you know, you one of the high start and all this. You just can fit everybody else in easy enough, usually on FanDuel to get there. So unless, unless we had an obvious spot, like a Coors or a big, you know, total with the Dodgers or Yankees, I just don't think we need to worry about spending down. And, and I, Gore could win it. I don't tell you, no one gets that Q start literally every game. It's like, it's, yeah, that's true. He's, he's, and he doesn't walk people. He pitches deep. Even if he gives up three runs in the first, yep. tends to go yep. five, five innings, yeah. six innings more and, and striking out another seven or eight. So yep. he's, uh, he feels safe with, uh, with upside. So I like yep. that, that call. I have my priorities as, and again, they're going to be narrowed down, but Nola Verlander, Severino, a little behind them at the top, Springs, Kopech, Manoa in the middle, uh, Bundy and Kelly in the just in the in the as the lower tier guys and then maybe mixing around getting funny with Palenta, Palente, Garcia, Irvin. Those would be my get funny plays. And my stack, so oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, 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 no problem. My favorite stacks right now are Texas, Chicago, White Sox, and the Angels. I'm going to be mixing in, I'm going to look deeper into Toronto, the Dodgers, depending on the weather, Minnesota, Oakland at for value and potentially KC, Detroit, and San Francisco. But I know that's a lot of names, but it's early in the day, and we're trying to trying to narrow it down as we go. My two favorites are, are the White Sox, Texas. Um, I guess those are my two two favorites as far as stacks go, considering everything, like ownership and all that all that other stuff. And pitching, uh, you know, again, I'll go, I'll go back to my idea. You know, first of all, I'm going to be probably save us in the build, build, build me 150. Um, and then in my, in my hand build, so I'm going to build a couple of hand built, uh, pretty, you know, bigger buy-ins today. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do what I said. I think I'm going to shuffle those, those, uh, those Gore, um, what's his name? Uh, Kopech, Manoa, and maybe play three, maybe play three bigger buy-ins with those three, just, just this rotated yeah. and then have Nola and Springs beat me. I think that, I think that's, that is what I'm going to do. That's, that's a, it's a fun way to spend Friday is, is to think you're doing well before the NOLA thing starts to happen. You know, so yeah, that's right. But I actually love this build you have right here. I think this is a great example of a good tournament build. Yeah. Playing the Kopech Manoa, it's it just, it's, I love it. I think it's a great way to get different from those. And even if other people have this similar type of stack for the White Sox, which again, is going to be weird because the White Sox have a lot of guys you can use um like you you know you don't have robert in this one and there's so but i but i think this is the kind of build that you know i, I see that's right away and it looks like a build that i was flirting with i'll tell you i'll tell you something else which we talked about like briefly which we should talk more about one of these days when, when we when it, when it comes up is that idea of of, of using a, a team's bullpen or lack thereof right to drive how you build your lineup so that idea again of of of, of of the Toronto play against Milwaukee. Remember we talked about that earlier that, that even though Milwaukee has a good bullpen, you know what I mean? Like if you're going to play the pitcher from Toronto, those correlate really nicely, you know? Uh, um, and that's, that, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing that, no, that not that many people get into. Yep. I, I agree. All right, guys. Well, that's it for us. I'm going to ask you a quick question after we get off, but uh, yep. good luck to everybody today and uh, let's crush it.